Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge and we've got a Civivi like you saw on the thumbnail. This is a Torbay Knives design, my first knife from this designer. It's called the Kepler. Got a decent sheath. Not so fond with the belt loop kind of system, but it's a decent sheath. And here's the knife. If I cover up my face, it might focus on it. It's a pretty big knife, over four and a half inches in the blade. I like it. It's a good weight. It's a good size. Very useful, very functional, uh, quite versatile. I didn't think it would be. It's not really a stabber kind of knife, although you can get away with puncturing softer materials without a big deal at all. 9018 MOV stainless steel on here, which is a good budget stainless steel. And the price point on this thing at White Mountain Knives is $85, but you can save 10% with my code. CCE. And that's true of a number of places that I have uh, deals with. Sometimes the code's worth different percentages though. So we'll see. I've got a link down below the video. In the video description, I've got links for a number of different places where you can buy things. One place that I really hope you will use my uh, referral links for is if you go shopping at Amazon. If you go shopping at Amazon and use my link that's down below to open up the Amazon website, then I will get a tiny commission and it'll add up to help me get a new lens for this camera. See how the parallax is just out? This is, that looks all crooked. Yeah, it's because I've got a cheap lens. I've got a really good macro lens, as you can see from the close-up pictures. There won't be that many close-up pictures in this video, but in most of my videos, I got good close-up pictures. I need a better lens for this camera for this kind of longer view. So it doesn't do that twisting of everything because yeah, that picture's hanging straight up and down. Honest, it is. So without any further jibber jabber, let's get down to the tabletop and take a good close look at this knife. Here's the knife. Uh, you may notice that you're viewing at a different angle now. Now it's a little bit like you're sitting across from me looking down at what I have in my hands. Hopefully I'll be able to do this quite well. My overhead system, it's broken. Um, the rig that I put together to hold the camera straight up and down. I might have to buy something new for that. Or if this view works out just fine, I'll just keep doing it this way. So here's the knife. We've got, you know, lots of blade here and we've got lots of handle. It's a big knife. I've injured my wrist since I got home too. So sometimes you might see me do some awkward motions. I think I pinched a nerve back in here or something like right in the wrist and it's going up my pinky finger and down. Not a big deal. It'll get better. But the blade, the big thing about this blade is you can see it's quite deep and we've got a huge index finger choil and it's actually very comfortable in hand. It feels very secure. We've got a high flat grind, not quite to the spine, a huge swedge here. It's got the clip point here and sort of a drop here and then the clip. And even that is slightly rounded right there. This is after I've sharpened it. Let me show you some video that I took before I sharpened it. Here's the edge of the blade before I sharpened it. The dark spots you see is a little bit of ink left over from when I checked the grind angle. So you can see it's pretty rough. This is what it looks like after I sharpened it. It's got a much cleaner edge. This is just a working edge. It's not a polished edge. It's not a mirror edge. It's just a nice working edge. And unfortunately, it doesn't want to stay focused, but I think you get a good idea of the edge now. And it's consistent all the way along the blade now. They didn't do a good job sharpening the knife at the factory. Now at 20 degrees per side, I just put on a working edge. It works really well. It cuts great, much better than it did out of the box. So I'm not upset about that at all. Oh, one other thing, we've got some coarse jimping up here. And of course there's another swedge there. This is not the kind of knife that you're gonna use outdoor for batoning, mostly because you've got a very thin spine here and it's just going to break your piece of wood apart. Also, for batoning, it's best if you don't have a very deep knife, like from the spine to the cutting edge, the bigger that distance is, the less useful it is for batoning because you're basically creating a wedge with a sharp edge. And the longer it is this way, the less effective it is at wedging the wood grains apart. So yeah, it's not for that kind of purpose. I think this knife is a good camp knife. 
I'm talking about car camping, not going out hiking into the woods solo camping or with one other person or something into the far depths of the uh, wilderness or anything. Yeah, you know, car camping. So your your car's close by. You can afford to bring heavy stuff with you because this knife's got a little bit of weight. It's not terribly heavy. I'll give you the full specs later on, but it's it's a fairly heavy knife because you've got a thick chunk of steel. It's a little bit over an eighth of an inch. Yeah. But I found with this deep index finger, I could hold it even sometimes with my middle finger and holding it like this, sort of, and chopping food, no problem. Slicing food, no problem. Using it a lot like a kitchen knife with a lot of sturdiness. This is more sturdy than any kitchen knife. Well, maybe not any kitchen knife, but then an average kitchen knife. It's a whole lot more sturdy than that. Badging on the knife, it says Civivi right there. And on this side, we've got Torbay Knives. That's the designer. At least I think it's pronounced that way. Hopefully it is. The handle, we've got sort of a peaked shape. There's the high point is this line right across here, right down the middle where the middle of the screws are. So it's got an angle there, angle there, and then a chamfer, a big chamfer on either side. The chamfer goes around this finger choil. And there's just a slight chamfer at the front and at the back with two screws right down the middle. At the end of the handle here, we've got a huge exposed hole. There's some jimping on it and then a lanyard in it. I'm sorry, Civivi, but I gotta say, this is the dumbest lanyard for this knife. It makes no sense at all. What are you gonna do? Hold on to it back there? Like, it's just a decoration there. It's useless. So I'm taking it off and I will never use this type of lanyard on this type of knife. Uh, for a folding knife, sure, that might be okay. But for this type of knife, no. Maybe a loop. If you've seen my video on how to use loops with handheld knives, it's got enough weight that you could use it as a chopper, like into hard substances outside, like wood and stuff. So I'd much prefer a nice loop that I could uh, use to hold my hand securely on the knife. We've got some jimping back here, just uh, three little divots in there, so four bumps. You could use it to crush things if you wanted to. It's fairly strong. And right down there, in very tiny letters, it says 9CR18 MOV, which is a decent steel. I also forgot to mention, we don't have a sharpener's choil, but we've got a cutaway here that effectively works like a sharpener's choil without being a spot for things to get caught on. So you can sharpen right to the heel of the blade before you're getting up into the plunge. It's just well made. As far as the design of this knife goes, I'm happy with it. I quite like it a lot. It's um, not perfect, but it's quite good. And you might hear Bandit snoring in the background. He just fell asleep, I think. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, if I had a separate camera here, I could take a picture of it and show it to you. It was easy to take off. We've got screws T8 on either side. Uh, it is free spinning, so you need two screwdrivers. I would prefer if these were T10, maybe even T15. T8 is the smallest that I find acceptable. Bigger would make it even look, I don't know, look stronger, look more manly, if you will. I don't know. And it would actually be better. The bigger the screws, the less likely to strip in the same materials. So that's good. One other thing to pay attention to is these two screws are different lengths. So the longer one goes at the front because the G10 is thicker there. See how thick that is compared to back here? So when you put it back together, if you're getting frustrated, just double check that you've got the long one at the front and the shorter one at the back. When I went to sharpen my system, I put it, sharpen it in my system, in my guided sharpening system. I clamp it right here. And I want this edge to be perpendicular to the stone. So the stone's going like this. That means when I'm sharpening at the heel, it would have been rubbing on the G10. I, at 20 degrees, it would have been rubbing on the G10. And I don't want to clamp it like this. You know, it would clear the G10, but then your angle at the tip and the heel would be different. So you want to keep it as straight as you can perpendicular, which means it's better to take the handle scales off to clamp it on your guided system. 9CR18 MOB stainless steel, which is a good stainless steel. Rockwell on that is usually around 59. It can go into the 60s, no problem. 
but usually they temper it down to about 59, which is quite good for this thing. And again, Torbay Knives Designer, made by Civivi. The weight of this knife, 216 grams, that's 7.65 ounces, that's including this useless lanyard. The weight of the sheath, 95 grams, which is 3.3 ounces, together 311 grams, 10.95 ounces. The sharpness from the factory, 205 best, so that's somewhat worse than average. It didn't get a good score at all. I sharpened it up just a decent working edge and got the score down to about 60. 60 best and it works really, really well. If you don't know what BESS is, I've got a video talking about uh, how that works and the device that I use to measure sharpness. A uh, link to it is going to be, I don't know, up on this corner, I think. Measurements, sizes, that kind of stuff. The cutting edge length is 123.4 millimeters, 4.86 inches. The blade length tipped to the closest spot on the G10, 115.2 millimeters, 4.54 inches. The thickness of the blade, 3.93 millimeters, 0.1545 inches. The depth of the blade is biggest right near the heel, not quite at the heel. 42.2 millimeters, 1.66 inches. How thick is it behind the grind? Measured in three places here, 0.54 millimeters, 21 and a half thousandths of an inch. I wish it was a little bit thinner, but it's not terrible. The grind angles. Well, this side's got an average of 25.4 degrees. This side's got an average of 27.2 degrees. Yeah. So this side started at 26.5, uh, went to 24.3, and most of this last area, almost half of it was about 26.6. .6. That's a variation of 2.3 degrees along the length, and like I said, 27.2 degrees average. This side started at 26.9, and then around here it went up to 28.3, around 27.0, and 26.8. And that's an average of 27.2, like one and a half degrees variation. So yeah, they did not do a good job on sharpening this big blade. The rest of the measurements, the handle length, this is just the G10 length, 132.8 millimeters, 5.53 inches. The thickness of the handle, like I said, it's thicker at this end. It started at 15.6 millimeters, which is 0.614. It ended here at 12.3 millimeters, 0.484 of an inch. The handle depth, the widest point within the grip area is right here. 31 millimeters, 1.22 inches. And the grip here is a little over 10 centimeters, right around four inches, which is plenty for most hands. And the total length from the tip to the very end of the steel here, 253 millimeters, 9.96 inches. So it's a 10 inch knife. The balance point on this thing is right just a bit behind that screw which is a very well-balanced knife. So that's the specs of the thing. Also need to talk about the sheath. The sheath is a Kydex sheath. Retention's great, holds on really, really well. No wiggle, nothing loose. Uh, Well-spaced holes for belt loops. Now this is the Civivi belt loop. It's the Terzula design. I don't like it. I it works really well, it's functional, it holds on to your pants, no problem at all. Uh, here's a little screw head, and you can adjust this so that whatever belt width you have, it sits nice and snug and proper there. But it sits so high on your hip that I don't like this. I'd much prefer that if there's a system like Real Steel uses, where they've got a piece of Kydex over here and then a piece of belt, sort of like seat belt kind of material. And then it would sit with your belt about here instead of here. That would be much preferred. It would help it to be comfortable on my hip. Uh, I could get into a vehicle and it would be able to swing out of the way a little bit when I sit down to put on my seat belt or whatever. I'm just not a fan of that. But the main part is just fine. You just 
put your thumb on there and push away and out it comes. So fairly decent. There's a drain hole down there. Well made, just the belt loop system I don't prefer. So what's my summary on this thing? Well, it's $85 at White Mountain Knives, minus 10% with our discount code uh, CCE. That makes it $76.50. Or of course, if you get it during the sale at Civivi, it's 75 US there. Uh, I didn't double check about the cost of shipping there. Shipping for Americans within the United States is free from White Mountain Knives. And it's economical to ship to Canada. The Canadian price of this is about $97 from White Mountain Knives. Fixed blades like this have no problem crossing the border. It's just totally safe. If you want to buy this from like Blades Canada, you're paying $139, $138 for this knife. Plus taxes, which are more than it is uh, from White Mountain Knives. I've almost never had to pay taxes importing knives from White Mountain Knives. It's just the very odd, rare time that I've had to pay anything. And their shipping, while it's gone up in recent months, you know, it is a very good price to ship this from White Mountain Knives. I like it quite a lot. I like the deep index finger toil here. That gives you a lot of extra security. The tip's not really designed for piercing, but on softer materials, it's not really a problem. Got a nice long straight edge, just a little bit of a belly right there. It's actually really good for slicing. It works quite well for most food prep. You know, it could be a little thinner behind the edge for things like tomatoes and stuff, but it, it works quite well for camp food prep. I really like that sort of anti-sharpness toil, but still a sharpness toil kind of thing right there. The handle being thicker and tapering down and being wider and tapering down, it's actually very comfortable in hand. You know, my hands are just within that extra large range, just barely, and I really like how this feels in the hand. Even a reverse grip, your pinky can go in there, and even a reverse pull grip, no problem. And, you know, hammer grip, saber grip, it's just a decent grip knife, even sort of kitchen knife kind of grip works just fine on this. So I'm happy with it. I don't like the lanyard so much. The sheath, I'm really happy with the retention. This uh, sheath works really, really well. I'm not a big fan of this. This Terzula designed uh, belt clip, it's just, I'm not happy with it. Not because it doesn't work, it's because it has to sit so high up on your hip. The grind angles are terrible from the factory, but you can sharpen your knives. I hope you can, so you can fix that without too much of a problem. And this silliness, this lanyard's just silly. Now you can still use this paracord, just untie it and create a proper secure loop, and that'd be better. This is empty paracord. They've taken the insides out, so it's just the casing. So do I recommend this knife? I think it's pretty good for the price. I like stainless steel on these kinds of knives. And this steel is good. It's a good budget knife fixed blade. I'm happy with it. I think you might be too. Thanks for watching my video. Thank you so much for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Those things really do make a difference. Huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. My YouTube member supporters, although there's only, I think, four of you right now, Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel, go to patreon.com slash cce or click down, be down below the video. Uh, right about there, I think it's going to be. There's a little button in blue that says join. You can join up and follow the prompts and support the channel. Again, if you are a supporter of the channel, I've got stickers for you. Just uh, check the Patreon link or go to youtube.com slash Canadian Cutting Edge slash community and you will find the message about the stickers. Again, that's only for my supporters. If you're not a supporter, you won't see that message on YouTube. Have a great day, and always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.